guys bounce back when you know, last week or somebody talked about doing more, focusing and kind of regrouping after one and three, and then go out and have a loss like that. So how do you bounce back mentally this week? Uh, same mindset. You know, you know, going up, going into the week, you're gonna either do two things. You know, win or lose. Uh, Unfortunately, we lost the game, but the mindset doesn't change. You know, um, we, we felt like we prepared uh, well, but you know, sometimes just the cookies just, just crumbles that way. Uh, but again, we're, we're looking to regroup and go out there and get a dub this week. Some of the, the mental mistakes we saw um, in Game Five, like we've seen for a couple of weeks here. What, what has to happen for those? Uh, self-inflicted wounds to, to get cleaned up so that you guys can be in you know better game situations uh yeah um that's definitely been a, a emphasis this week obviously i won't divulge too much of what our game plan is going to be uh, going into this week but we've definitely um been harping on the fact that we've had too many um you know mental errors and we're definitely looking to um change that so yeah. I mean, just go out there and, and try to play your best. Um, that's that's my role in that. I, nothing else really matters. You know, um, all the words, all the talking, things of that nature. Um, just want to play as well as I can to make his job easy. It's been a while since you guys scored a lot of points. Do you think everyone's buying into this new offense? Um, like we always say, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily matter the play that's being called. It's the lack of execution. You know, never blame the play caller. It's always the players out there who are trying to execute the plays, um, you know, at the end of the day. So. Marty, the prevailing theme is that you, um, that you guys are preparing well up until game day, and then game day comes and, you know, you guys just fall flat. So what do mm -hmm. you think is happening in those game days that's just, you know, the preparation isn't translated? Uh, yeah, that's the thing. You know, you can practice well, but at the end of the day, you, you still have a mission on Sunday that you have to complete. Uh, uh, we haven't completed the mission um, in a couple of weeks now. So we just got to keep going back to the drawing board so that we can try to achieve that. Um, Obviously, I could say that we could come out here and you know keep practicing hard and all those things, but it truly is uh, any given Sunday in this league. So we have to de definitely find a way to go out there and uh, perform on Sunday. So that's what we're looking to do. Is this kind of um, it just seems like you guys aren't obviously making any drastic changes right now as a team. Is it just the fact that hey, you guys feel like you haven't been executing out on the field that you don't need a drastic panic change right now? I mean, we are making uh, changes. You know, one of the things that Coach Kev is emphasizing is that we need a spark, and it can come from anywhere. And they're definitely doing some um, some things um, to to try to create that spark. That I again, I, I won't divulge, but um, that definitely is an emphasis for sure. Is this offense more complicated than the one you ran the last two years? Um, not necessarily. I wouldn't say so. No. Mm -mm. Or do you feel like the offense needs to run it better um, to kind of take some pressure off Deshaun in the passing game, especially if teams are playing as much, I guess, too high safety as Deshaun says they are having? Yeah, I think we need to do everything better. Uh, I think we need to run better. I think we need to uh, run better routes. I think we need to, uh, you know, everything, block, whatever. Um, and everybody can be a little bit better for this team. So, yeah. What gives you the confidence or the feeling or the notion that Deshaun wants in this quarterback who can still play a winning football? Um, just knowing him, you know, knowing how he prepares, uh, knowing his mindset, uh, knowing the, just the type of person, player he is. Um, I definitely do feel that way. Again, you know, obviously we, we've gotten off to a, a, a start that we didn't necessarily want to get off to, but um, we still have a lot of time to turn things around. I believe we'll do that. Out the thought or the feeling that perhaps maybe it could make some sense for another team to come 
I'm not thinking about that. I'm not thinking about us not winning some games. I'm thinking about us winning some games. So that, that doesn't even cross my mind. Amari, just as the losses kind of stack up here, like you guys are saying all the right things publicly to us and, and everything, and it seems like outwardly that you're staying together as a group. I mean, how hard is that to do, and why do you think you guys are kind of bending, not breaking right now? I wouldn't say we're. I wouldn't say we're bending. I mean, I mean, it's the easiest thing in the world to do to um, to jump off the ship when it's sinking. I, I, I guess I would say, but I mean, that's what. I mean, I, I don't even consider myself that type of person. You know, that's what people who aren't dedicated do. That's what people who aren't committed do. Uh, things get hard sometimes. Um, you just have to. You just have to fight your way through it. Um, I'm a fighter. I know the guys on this team, they're fighters, uh, and that's what fighters do, you know, until the end, fight until the end. So that's what we're going to do. I'm all right. The outside perception, just looking at the offense, the lack of production, the lack of scoring, um, the troubles that you guys have had from an execution standpoint, is just like there's just so many things that need to be addressed and, and fixed. So where, yeah. where do you like start when there's just so many things on that list that need to be tightened up? What's the, what's the first, where do you start in that? What's the first thing that has to happen that maybe can get the dominoes falling in the right direction? Um, I mean, it's easy to say, but it definitely starts with a win. Um, the win is what creates the momentum. The momentum is what creates the confidence. So. Um, now, what will get us to the win? Again, the same thing that we've that we've been preaching, you know, going out there, you know, practicing, executing in practice, practicing like we're a winning team that we, a t we're a team that wants to win, uh, doing all the right things, um, doing a little bit extra in every aspect of our daily lives as football players, whether that's watching more film, getting more treatment, uh, taking care of the body a little bit more, just a little bit extra in everything. Um, when you look back at that fourth down where you had 12 guys out there, um, when you have time to think back on it, could you guys have done anything different on the field as opposed to having to take a timeout or a penalty there? Did you just send somebody back off to the sideline? Yeah, so you know, generally that would have been a penalty, but I, I, I actually stood outside of the huddle um, because I saw that there were too many guys. Um, but the thing is, we do have to communicate better. Um, as it relates to the personnel um, so that we know exactly who should be in the game. So going back, that's what we need to do better. When whoever is coming in is, you know, taking somebody out of the game, they need to be shouting the personnel. And, you know, that's one of the things that we do harp on in practice. But again, we have to make it translate to the game. So, yeah. You are one of the guys counting. You're such a student of the game, and Deshaun mentioned that after the pass game that you guys would maybe talk to the coaches about how you can maybe utilize guys better or strategize better. Have you guys kind of shared your views and thoughts on what you can do to jumpstart this offense? Yeah, it's like I alluded to earlier. Um, it's not nothing that you know I can necessarily share or give away right now, but of course, I mean, the players want to win, the coaches want to win. So conversations, you know, have been had on, you know, things that we can do to get us closer to winning. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Harry. Thank you. Joe, you've been in uh, some one and four situations in the past. Does this one feel any different? Is there is there still reason for optimism with as many games as you have left? Yeah, we are. Um, we we're very focused on this week, but we understand you know, where we were last year, where we've been before with this team. Um, we got to find a way to win a game. That, that's really where it's at. And then find a way to win the next one. Um, there's definitely urgency. Like, I'm not going to say panic, but we're urgent. You know, we, we want to be urgent. We need to be um, as urgent as possible because it's it's a big game for us. But um, the guys, I think, understand, like, what situation we're in. But I do think there is optimism that we can turn this thing around. Why do you think it's been so hard to kind of find that whatever the sweet spot is for this offense? I know you've had a lot of moving parts, et cetera, but what, what would you say? Yeah, it, truthfully, it comes down to execution. Like, you watch the film and you see, you know, too many MAs. And it's not just one position group. Like, one time it's like the line, you know, blowing a block. The next time it's, you know, the receiver's running the wrong route or, or you know, dropping a pass. And then the next time it's, you know, the quarterback missing one. And, and it, it just all 
adds up and it, it's it's frustrating so it comes down to executing and it comes down to just playing one play at a time and and truthfully no one has to do too much we just have to do our job when there's so many you know you point out those things and just from the outside looking in and it's also you know easy to see so where where do you begin when it's it's not just one thing that you can say hey we tighten this we're we're in good shape there just it feels like there's a lot of things that have to yeah, I think it's accountability on each each person. Like we we've talked about it, um, and that's that's the frustrating part. Is like we you talk about it, and it's like actions have to happen eventually. You have to eventually do, but the each room, each person is responsible. And and we talked about in the old line room, like you have to take care of yourself before you can start helping other people. So make sure you're right in your book, and then you can help the guy next to you on the on the left and the right. And a lot of it is a is a you know group sport, especially you know five old linemen, but it's truthfully like looking yourself in the mirror and being like, what can I do wrong at right to, to make sure that, you know, I'm locked in. I know all my assignments. I know what I'm supposed to do. And then going out and eventually like walking the guy in front of you. Cooper mentioned that uh, some of the offensive guys had conversations with the coaches this week to try to help the offensive conversation um, that went beyond, you know, just regular interaction during the uh, linemen involved in those two. Um, Is that a senior uh, meeting? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure Coop's had his his talks. I've I've talked to you know Coach Stefanski throughout the season. Um, there wasn't like a special like group meetup or anything this week that I know of. Could have been a position meeting. Yeah, correct. So, what do you make of all of the uh, calls for Deshaun Watson's benching this week every time you turn on the radio or the TV or wherever you go? Yeah, I think we have to uh, be able to put him in a position to to be successful. Like. I've talked about it before. Like the O line has to play a perfect game before we can be like, "Hey, we gotta we gotta fix something else." Like we have to we have to give him a chance. We have to block good enough. Um, we have to play good enough as an offense. Less MAs, um, you know, before we we get into you know pointing fingers at other people. So I know this would be your 150th game coming up on Sunday. Just knowing how much it means to you guys as an O line and you personally to be available. Just kind of your thoughts on that milestone. Yeah. Yourself. Dan let me know about that this morning, so he's on top of it. Um, you know, 150th start here, and you look at the names that are around you or ahead of you on the list, and it's, it's I mean, just the history of the Cleveland Browns and, and what they've done, it's it's pretty special. And I'm, you know, there's a lot of luck that comes into staying healthy and being available, but that's one thing, you know, anytime I have a chance, I want to be out there for my, my teammates and um, and and just give it a go. But uh, it's it's a cool stat, and, you know, hopefully we can get a win in the 150th one. Joel, when you think back to the first, your first couple of starts and then kind of look at Zach, who's kind of going through it, what do you remember from your starts and that you, you know, you've tried to impart on him as he's, you know, he's tried to, to go through this trans transition? You know, I talked to him about it being a long season. It's it's a, the NFL is, is such a week-to-week -week business, you know what I mean? And, and to be fair to him, like, we went into a couple tough road environments for him against D tackles that are top 10 D tackles in the NFL. Um, and so that's like a, a huge challenge. And I told him like, hey, like you're gonna win some, you're gonna lose some. We have to keep battling, we have to keep trusting your technique. You never wanna go into it and, and be like, man, this wasn't working, you know, the one time you did it. Like you have to use your hands, you have to trust your technique, you have to stay focused. Um, and to his credit, he's been, you know, very coachable and trying to learn. And I think the future is bright for him. Like, like, like I said, it was very tough environments for him, tough opponents. Um, and he's working, and he, he has the same attitude, and he's trying to get better, and he's trying to improve. Um, I was very lucky to play between Joe and Alex my first you know couple starts, and they just told me what to do, and I just played as hard as I could, you know. And, and so that was that was easy for me. Um, not everybody's as lucky as that situation, but he is focused on on improving, and like all of us, getting better each week. That doesn't let up this week for him. No, it does not. No, they have. Uh, <laughs> You know, Jalen Carter's a great player. Their D-line's, you know, the strength. I think like said it every week. The D-line's been the strength of the uh, the defenses that we've been playing. Um, so it'll be a big challenge. But he's locked in. He's focused. He's, um, like I said, trying to improve every day. Do you guys feel like there are uh, things that you can do to move the ball, even against the pressure that you're going to face and the things that you guys have going out? Yeah, I think we have a, yeah, I think we have a great game plan. I think we saw some stuff late in the game. You know, with running the ball, with getting the ball, the hands, you know, the quarterback a little quicker, um, protecting better. But no, I think we have a good plan. I think we're we're gonna be ready to execute this week and um, be ready to go. You guys have talked about owning your record, being one and four. 
how do you balance that of owning that one and more record, but not losing you know the weeks to come? To me, it's easy because it's a week to week business. Like we have to play the Eagles this week. We have to win the game. Like truthfully, in my head, it doesn't. Like we are one and four. That's what our record is, but. It doesn't matter to me. Like I'm playing this game the same way, regardless. So you go out there, you give it 100 percent. You try and um, win this game, and you know, see what happens the next week. As a, as a offensive mind, how do you think the offense has been, and how much change has it been to the first five? Uh, season, maybe because you're you know running more shotgun as opposed to like under center or wide zone. Yeah, it's been um, a little bit different, you know, to start the year of just more gun runs, more things like that. Truthfully, we haven't had, like, too many shots at it. Like, we, we've ran the ball at a, a lower clip. I thought in the second half this, this um, you know, week we, we started throwing some G scheme in there. We, we had some good runs. We had some traps and some whams that, that hit. So there was some couple different schemes. But I think we're, we're getting more comfortable. And, um, you know, if we do call runs, like, we have to we have to execute them so you know we trust ourselves to to call them again. Joel, how, how have you seen Jack kind of handle? It looked like he was so close to coming back, then he has the hamstring, hasn't been able to get back. How have you seen him kind of handle that frustration? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, you come back from such a, you know, obviously Nick's injury is is was very public and very gruesome, but Jack had a pretty serious knee injury himself. So he's worked to come back and and have been focused for us. And I think he was getting ready to go, and you know, a hamstring went. Um, right before that so he was frustrated for it but he I know he's been working and he's been trying to be uh you know a coach for some of the younger guys when he's in the meeting room with us I mean it's a mix like you watch the game like early in the game there were some calls where you know we miss a run through back or, or they have a great blitz called into it um, so that comes down to execution you know but other times you know sometimes with the run game you just gotta two yards two yards three yards four yards 12 yards 15 yards it's kind of the way it works in the NFL um, but we can always execute better, and we can always we, we have to execute better. Joel, uh, Joe used to talk about how the losing would get to him year after year. How are you handling the one more record just from an emotional standpoint? Oh, it's incredibly frustrating. Um, you know, you want to win games. That's why you play the game. That's why I play the game. I'm in year 11. Like, I've done everything I need to do in my career. I just want to win. And so it's it's incredibly frustrating. But um, that's why I'm here every day because – because we're going to work and we're going to try and do everything possible to win, win these games. But, um, yeah, if you, if you come to work for any other reason, like, that's, you know, it's great. Like, we get paid a ton of money. We get, you know, all this stuff. But at the end of the day, it's like, how, how do you find a way to win? Hey, Joel, uh, I think it was during the broadcast of the Raiders game, it was mentioned that you were sharing notes, I think, specifically with Zach Zinter. And I think you referenced it afterward too. Yeah. So what what's all going into that? Is that a new thing? And what what kind of what are you trying to pass along? Yeah, I think everybody's a little different, but you know, like Wyatt has his own way of playing and his own style, and he's played a lot of football. Um, but with Zach, I was just like, hey, this is what I've my key points as a guard in this game, like what I'm focused on, and and I just try and write that out and share it with him. Um, it was tough because he has kind of a different – sometimes they switch sides and you play against the same guy, but he was kind of playing against a different guy that week. But I tried to watch his film and, and talk about his pass rush. And truthfully, there's, you know, five to ten plays a game where it's like, this is a key reminder here, this is a key, you know, focus point. And that's just really what I uh, tried to stress to him. So is that – are you keeping that up? Is that – you can him notes this week? Or? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's more just like Saturday night or, or Friday we go over, you know, the reminders and he has some thoughts too. But – Truthfully, I just make a page at the end of the week, and it's like guard notes for the week, and I, I try and write them out and, and get it so we're on the same page. Anybody do that for you? Well, um, I like I said, great mentorship. I remember Joe doing it with Mitch. The tackles would kind of have a meeting before the game about some of the big key reminders, and that kind of that kind of pushed the idea to me. Would you have to lean on Greco? Yeah, Greco was great. Uh, I sat next to him in meetings, and he uh, he he made sure I was doing the right thing. <laughs> Did they uh, flip Carter? I mean, I would say ninety-five percent. He's on the right guard, right side. So he'll but look. but on third downs, like pass rush, they'll run some giant fronts and things where he's on the left side. But most of the time, he is on the right guard. So going back to the one hundred and fifty games, 
Are you a reflective person? Do you ever take time to look back on your career, or is that is that for later? Um, mostly for later. I mean, every every once in a while in the off season or a big milestone hey. comes up, you know, you think about how 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 special it is. But um, you know, for me, I'm just trying to trying to win this week. Thanks, thanks.